talents of the young, the experienced together. And organizations today face different challenges. You need the disruptive thinking and the fresh mind of the youth in situations where legacy and culture may not be relevant. And you also need the experience of more experienced generations where you are dealing with incremental efficient things in which the beacon of the past could serve as a direction in terms of things like execution. So when you do both, you are going to have a great organization. So the message, to my first, and we're going to talk more about this, uh, we need both. There should never be a war of generations in the workplace. Great organizations leverage the strength of both. And for the senior people at work, why they bring the strength of experience, they must also be open-minded to unlearn the things that are changing, technology, the things that we know that are no longer valid, while they also share their experience in execution, process discipline with young people, and of course, of course mentor them. I think we all want the same thing from a workplace. We want a place where we can feel valued. We want a place, a great place to work. We want a place where we're happy to come to. So I think every generation agrees on that. Where we then begin to differ is what's important to me at this time and how can I get it from this one? The first is that we acknowledge that there are different generations. Yeah. And the fact that there is that diversity is a positive if you're able to get it to harness it, basically. So if you, I mean, the difference in, in, in those generations is obvious from how they use technology, from how they communicate, from even how they dress. I mean, when I joined Senesi Child three years ago, a colleague came to me and said, why do you dress so old? Oh my gosh. And I'm like, this is how we dress in Joy Langas. We don't wear jeans and t-shirt to work, you know? And it was obvious that there was, they didn't understand my dressing. That, that, that's simple, why do you dress so old? And, and at that time I was even end of a child. So there was, I, and I needed to come down and, and step down on my dressing to actually allow me to fit and even connect. Yeah. So there's that difference. And, and I tell people that it's not even about different heads and different generations. It's different stages that people are in yeah. in the organization. Yeah. So if you have someone that is 45 and is single and doesn't have children, they might have the same need for someone that is 20 that doesn't exactly. have kids. Exactly. But you have someone that is 22 that has two kids exactly. and have other responsibilities that. that they would demand different things from the organization. Mm -hmm. For us to be productive and for us to be able to harness all those things, we need to understand that we need to approach people from what motivates them. And I, and I, in my previous conversation with him, I said, we have different things that motivate different generations, right? So people will say, from research, uh, the traditionals, they, they are motivated by respect, loyalty, and then Gen Z, they're motivated by, let's say, Challenge. creativity yeah. and all that. But who is not motivated by loyalty? I mean, do you understand? Who is not motivated by respect? Who doesn't want to be respected? So I think that it's always getting those good things and the culture that enables everybody yeah. from respect to loyalty to creativity to flexibility and putting together us. because our approach to solving this problem yeah. has to be multi-generational, yeah. has to be multi-levels yeah. and it can't be one size fit all. And at the end of the day, like I said, it's not about those generations, it's about where people are in their career and where they are in their heads yeah. and what works for them. Go yes, they can hear me. Um, so, um, without you know belaboring all the valid points that my co-panelists had made, that is putting the vision and the mission of the organization at the core while everyone is aligned. I personally am so huge on diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, and I believe especially that on the African continent we have huge generational um, challenges that you know one particular generation cannot solve right we have broken infrastructure digitally physically and then you expect someone that was born right at the end of that to solve that or someone who was at the beginning of so we need most importantly um balanced teams and balanced opinions to solve that that being said i just mentioned that so that as founders um and um as business leaders we are not tilted towards recruiting someone who sort of looks like or who sounds like all the time. We should, yes, or, or rely heavily on competence, but um, at the same time, ensure that we have balanced teams. 
Having said that, I just want to um, discuss on about three major things that we need to be comfortable around um, to help these balancings work more effectively. And the first would be, we need to be more comfortable with borderless work, right? Uh, because most of the challenges around, um, around most of the frictions, right? Uh, for instance, around how performances are measured, um, for, as Adetong mentioned, how should we look? The way I look, how does that matter, yeah? Um, so such, we, we just have to be, as business leaders, we have to be comfortable you know, around borderless work and work on tools. So I come from, I saw how pe performance got managed from having core KPI, you know, balanced core cards to systems where, you know what, is the OKR, right? Um, to systems where it is about um, um, pe performance, performance based incentives. So this is your basic, but every month we are, you know, measuring compared to systems where you're probably being measured or being appraised, yes, appraised, appraisals, you know, once in a year, right? So things are rapidly changing. Um, so we need to get comfortable around borderless work, as I've said, especially post-COVID, and be more open to suitable tools, right? Um, I think the second thing I also want to mention, and there was an article that I wrote written, I think, four years ago about this. It was from a perspective of marketing then, that is generational marketing. And I said that it would be unfair and extremely stereotypical of anybody to say, oh, this particular generation acts like this. This particular generation is the one that ruins this. This particular generation is entitled. I think it would be so much unfair um, to, to put it candidly. It might even come off inhuman and at best it might come off being ignorant. Nobody wants to be at both ends. So uh, um, again, I'll just want to sum it up and say that business leaders need to be conscious about recruiting for diversity purposes, especially because I cannot reiterate this enough. The amount of challenges that you know I see we talk about, especially when you know we have some helicopter view of things, we have great, great challenges. Things are so broken. So we need that diversity, that broadness of mind. Broadness of mind, especially not to put people in brackets. And then, um, um, and then, of course, we have to be more agile with our measurements and performance tools. Thank you so much.